Okay, so first a heartfelt thank to the organizers for giving me this opportunity. And I think uh, we this is what we do have at the core at the moment, because we have quite a clear consensus regarding the first line management. And um, uh, uh, regarding the first line management, I would like to add a point that I was privileged to be a part of the national consensus guidelines of uh, management of uh, urothelial cancers in which we all experts had a discussion and there was a clear cut uh, evidence in the favor of the fact that we should be using platinum in the first line irrespective of the pdl1 status if the patient is not uh, eligible for a cisplatin we should go ahead with the carboplatin but uh, first line io was not being considered as the appropriate management irrespective of the pdl1 status so here however my topic is to discuss regarding the uh, um, maintenance therapy. So if we see the timeline improvement proven first line therapy, and I'm not going to details because this has been uh, covered by, by previous speakers. So we had initially platinum followed by something like a gemcitabine, then IOs, and now we have a drug known as avlumab, and which would be the main drug of contention of my discussion. So uh, we have uh, basically in first line setting, two situations where the patient is platinum eligible or platinum ineligible. And if there is a platinum ineligibility, uh, platinum eligibility, we also see whether the patient is cisplatin eligible or cisplatin ineligible. So we want to use cisplatin at any, uh, if uh, the condition of the permit, patients permit us to do so. So in fact, even if you start with a carboplatin based regimen and the patient improves in terms of the creatinine and everything, what the patient should be switched over to a cisplatin based regimen. So uh, the majority of patients do receive platinum based chemotherapy and that is the consensus. So what have we achieved till date uh, in the first line therapy is something like a 75 to 80% response rate. So that means that we are achieving a very fair, uh, good response rate. Then what is the problem? What are the unmet needs? The problem is that at a subsequent uh, evaluation, the patient seems to have a progression. So within nine months, about 65% of the patients do develop a progression leading onto a failure and some sort of chemo resistance. And the uh, survival is poor, meager to about uh, say uh, one to one and a half years. Also, there was a recent data which was published way in 2018-19 about these four trials, which showed that there is a lot of attrition when you talk about the first line and the second line management because there is no, uh, you know, uh, continuation maintenance in between, like in lung. So here, what happens is that once the patients who have received first line, uh, once they progress, only one third of them have found to have some sort of a second line management. Otherwise, these patients are lost to further treatment and any scope of better options. So uh, what options do we have? Uh, so classically, we had the option that we treat with the first line chemotherapy, wait and watch. When the patient progresses, start the second line therapy. We had an option of going for a continued maintenance where we go for a first line chemotherapy plus an IO, continue with an IO maintenance and then initiate a second line therapy when there is a disease progression. And there is something like a switch maintenance, which is first line chemotherapy, switch to IO maintenance in the form of Evolumab and initiate the second line whenever uh, the disease progresses. So we'll evaluate each uh, of these approaches. So if you see the first line approach, we had about 50 to 80 percent, as I've already mentioned, achieving some sort of a response. But however, with this approach, a lot of attrition and even those patients who were initiated on a second line therapy, meager uh, about 14 to 15 months of overall survival. That too with the cisplatin and the moment we more moved on to carboplatin, it was about 13 to 14 months. Now, the continuation maintenance approach, and there were three trials. I think my previous uh, speaker had already discussed IM Vigor 130. So uh, the final results are still awaited, but the interim analysis did not show any benefit in terms of OS. And the Keynote 361 was a negative trial, which was a pembrolizumab, and the Durvalumab trial, the Danube, was also negative. So continued maintenance was a failure in terms of any PFS or OS benefit till date. Now coming on to the switch maintenance. Now, and we had two trials again. One was a Javelin trial, which I'll be going to discuss. And this was a GU14 trial, which was for the pembrolizumab maintenance. And again, there was no significant benefit with versus no maintenance when you give pembrolizumab. So a pembrolizumab maintenance as a switch is not working as per the trials what we have. So we see that amongst the three approaches, only the switch maintenance approach that too along with Evolumab is the one which has been translating into a maximum overall survival. 
Okay, so maintenance therapy. Now, why maintenance therapy? So it can be first given on shortly the moment the induction therapy is completed after four to six cycles of induction therapy, maybe a gap of four to eight weeks, and we do not require any PDL one testing for the same. However, if the PDL one data is there, then we can actually prime the patient regarding the same because the results are superior when the PDL one is positive. So why this? Because it first it works with the previous treatment because it is seen that there is a synergistic mechanism of chemotherapy along with this immunodrug when they you are used together i'll tell you the mechanism in short the quality of life is maintained because this drug we know as an immunotherapeutic drugs these drugs have a different side effect profile as compared to chemotherapy so the patient can be continued these therapies for long and thirdly it prolongs the response so we have a better uh, os and a pfs data so this was the javelin bladder 100 trial it was a phase 3 trial conducted at 370 locations with 700 uh, patients locally advanced on metastatic urothelial cancer and this was the trial arm they were treat uh, these patients had received standard first line platinum based treatment and when the patients would have received any sort uh, have achieved any sort of clinical benefit which would have been in the form of a response or a stable disease they would have been uh, randomized one is to one to evolumab or best supportive care alone. Now, the scientific rationale, we know that the, when the chemotherapy would kill the tumor cell, it would also lead to a decrease in the immunosuppressive cells, as well as there would be a PDL1 upregulation leading on to more interaction with this drug. Also, the APCs are increased, and when this drug if evolumab would actually come on to interact with this PDL1 uh, receptor, there would be increase in the tumor cell death. This is in a nutshell what the, the mechan synergistic mechanism is. So if you see the baseline characteristics, 68 years is the median age, meaning by that the elderly can be safely given this drug and the ECOG performance status zero or one, but I think two might also be considered. 55% patients had visceral metastasis, so the burden of disease was high in uh, more than half. And the patient had received either cisplatin or carboplatin based regimen previously. So what we came in terms of a response, interim analysis showed a benefit of about seven months, but the updated analysis has shown an unprecedented OS benefit with this, uh, which is about nine months now. So 15, uh, it is about nine uh, and 23.8 months. So 8.8 .8 months uh, benefit in terms of OS with the hazard ratio 0.76, 24% benefit. And if we talk specifically of the PDL1 population, the updated data shows a 30.9 month survival versus 18.5 months, which is translating into a 31% uh, benefit. So if we come on to the aspect of this uh, various subgroups, we would see that this drug is helping in all the subsets, be it any gender, be it any ge geographical area, be what are the previous creatinine values, whether the patient is PDL1 positive or PDL1 unknown, and what regimen the patient has achieved. And also whether the patient has received, achieved a response or a stable disease. So in the overall population, this continued to achieve a lower, uh, longer median PFS compared with the those treated with BSC alone. We can see 5.5 versus 2.1 in the long-term analysis, and the data is still maturing. Now, this is what is very important that we consider that once the patient has achieved a response, they would be behaving better when we switch on to uh, switch maintenance therapy with Evolumab. However, the data showed that even the stable disease patients were doing fairly well, in fact, better than those having achieving a partial response. And the PFS improvement was also in lines as was in the OS, uh, as was with the OS. So, uh, Regarding the previous chemo regimen received, does it make a difference whether the patient has received a cisplatin or carboplatin? The benefit continued and it was about 25 months in the cisplatin arm because you used a better regimen there and about uh, 20 months in the arm which contained carboplatin, but it was much better than the best supportive care arm alone. Also, in terms of when do we need to randomize or we when do we need to switch the patients? So whether the patient would have received four cycles, five cycles or six cycles, the benefit was there. So one can actually, you know, uh, switch after four cycles or if the response is continuing very well, you might like to switch it after six. 
now we always had a data of this uh, european and the american data but now the question comes about the asian subgroup so they did a subgroup analysis of the asian population where india was also a part and uh, the same exactly same protocol was followed a treatment free interval of 4 to 4 10 weeks was given for a radiological assessment and it was again uh, either a switch over to this evolumab or a best supportive care arm alone and if you see the both the populations they were pretty well balanced in terms of the baseline characteristics so the results were nearly similar as what we have achieved there in the european population where the uh, the arm had actually given a 25% a 25 months overall survival median overall survival versus 18 and in terms of a pdl1 population it was about 26 versus 19 So the summary of the Asian subgroup data is that the first line maintenance treatment is a new standard of care in the Asian patient, which we can really expect. The MOS is twenty five point three months from the start of the maintenance therapy. There is a twenty six percent reduction in the risk of the death, and first line maintenance therapy led to a numerically longer time to end of the next line therapy, and there was no new safety concern. It was consistent with the previous trial as well. whenever we use a new drug we are actually uh, concerned about the uh, safety so just to point out over here that most of the safety measures were in line with the previous and it was very uh, if you see the grade 3 column the uh, the incidence is pretty less only one death occurred due to sepsis and even in terms of immunological response uh, uh, side effects the drug was very well tolerable and this has been actually seen even after 12 months of therapy and it has been seen that the side effects continue to be in a very tolerable range and uh, this is a graph to show that how many patients have been continuing on this drug even after 3 years or even one uh, 20% of the patients still continue to be on this drug post 3 years in uh, the data which have been analyzed so this is all uh, regarding the uh, javelin trial and the uh, Uh, maintenance so the only uh, thing to be noted over here is that uh, in terms of all the guidelines this drug has been approved as a first line maintenance after any patient who has achieved any sort of a response or a stable disease after a platinum based treatment so with that i hand it back to the organizers and thank you thank you so much uh, dr agrawal for that uh, elaborate presentation Any questions questions? probably we can take during the uh, next panel discussion. Uh, 